Secondly, either every providential possession in every case gives a title, or God hath declared it as a law, that it shall be so in this particular matter of authority only. The first cannot be said, for that would justify all robbery, nor the second, for where is that law found? Nay, it were impious to allege it, for it would say, There is no unjust possessor or disorderly occupant, but if he were once in the possession, he were right enough, and then usurpation would be no sin. Thirdly, if none of the causes of magistracy be required to the producing of this possessory power, then it cannot or ha then it cannot give or have any right, for without the true causes it cannot be the true effect, and so can have no true right to be owned. But none of the causes of magistracy are required to the production of this, neither the institution of God, for this might have been if magistracy had never been instituted, nor the constitution of men, for this may usurp without that. Fourthly, that which must follow upon the right and be legitimated by it cannot be owned as the right, nor can it give the title. But the possession of the power, or the possessory exercise thereof, must follow upon its right and be legitimated by it. Therefore, a man must first be in the relation of a ruler before he can rule, and men must first be in the relation of subjects before they obey. The commands of public justice, to whom they are given, uh, excuse me, to whom are they given but the magistrates? They must then be magistrates before they can be owned as the ministers of justice. He must be a magistrate before he can have the power of the sword. He cannot, by the power of the sword, make himself magistrate. Fifthly, that which would make every one in the possession of the magistracy a tyrant cannot be owned. But a possessory occupation giving right would make every one in possession a tyrant. For that which enervates and takes away that necessary distinction between the king's personal capacity and his legal capacity, his natural and his moral power, will make every king a tyrant, seeing it makes everything that he can do as a man to be legally done as a king. But a possessory occupation giving right would enervate and take away that distinction. For how can these be distinguished in a mere possessory power? The man's possession in all his legal power is all his legal power, excuse me. And if possession give a right, his power will give legality. Sixthly, what sort or size of possession can be owned to give a right? Either it must be partial or plenary possession. Not partial, for then others may be equally entitled to the government in competition with that partial possessor, having also a part of it. Not plenary, for then every interruption or usurpation on a part would make a dissolution of the government. Seventhly, hence would follow infinite absurdities. This would give equal warrant in case of vacancy to all men to step to and stickle for the throne and expose the commonwealth as a booty to all aspiring spirits, for they needed no more to make them sovereigns and lay a tie of subjection upon the consciences of people, but to get into possession. And in case of competition, it would leave people still in suspense and uncertainty whom to own. For they behoove to be subject only to the uppermost, which could not be known until the controversy be decided. It would cassate and make void all preobligations, cautions, and restrictions from God about the government. It would cancel and make vain all other titles of any, or constitutions, or provisions, or oaths of allegiance. Yea, to what purpose were laws or pactions made about ordering the government, if possession gave right and laid an obligation on all to own it? Yea, then it were sinful to make any such provisions, to fence in and limit the determination of providence, if providential possession may authorize every intrusive acquisition to be owned. Then also in case of competition of two equal pretenders to the government, there would be no place left for arbitra arbitrations. Excuse me. If this were true, that he has the power that is in possession, the difference were at an end. No man could plead for his own right then. In this also it is inconsistent with itself, condemning all resistance against the present occupant, yet justifying every resistance that is but successful to give possession. Eighthly, that which would oblige us to own the devil and the pope cannot be a ground to own any man. But if this were true, that possession gave right, it would oblige us to own the devil and the pope. Satan we find claiming to himself the possession of the world's kingdoms, Luke 4, verse 6, which as, many, which as to many of them is in some respect true, for he is called the God of this world and the prince of this world, John 14, verse 30, and 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4. Are men therefore obliged to own this authority? 
or shall they deny his and acknowledge his lieutenant who bears his name, and by whom all his orders are executed? I mean, the man that tyrannizes over the people of God. For he is the devil that casts some into prison, Revelation 2, verse 10. Again, the Pope, his captain general, lays claim to a temporal power and, ecclesia and ecclesiastic both over all the nations and possesses it over many. And again, under the conduct of his vassal, the Duke of York, is attempting to recover the possession of Britain. Shall he therefore be owned? This cursed principle disposes men for popery and contributes to strengthen popery and tyranny both on the stage to the vacating of all the promises of their di dispossession. Ninthly, that which would justify a damnable sin and make it a ground of duty cannot be owned. But this fancy of owning every power and possession would justify a damnable sin and make it the ground of a duty, for resistance to the powers ordained of God is a damnable sin. Romans 13, verse 2. But the resistors, having success in providence, may come to the possession of the power by expelling the just occupant, and by this opinion, that possession would be ground for the duty of subjection for conscience' sake. Tenthly, if a self-created dignity be null and not to be owned, then a mere professory is not to be owned. But the former is true, as Christ saith in John 8, verse 54, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. Eleventhly, that which God hath disallowed, possession without right. Ezekiel 21, verse 27, I will overturn, overturn, overturn it, until he come whose right it is. Hosea 8, verse 4, they have set up kings, and not by me. Matthew 26, verse 52. And they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. By this the usurper of the sword is different from the true owner. Twelfthly, many scripture examples confute this, showing that the possession may be in one, and the power with right in another. David was the magistrate, and yet Absalom professed the place. 2 Samuel 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Sheba also made a revolt and usurped the possession in a great part, and yet David was king, 2 Samuel 20, verse 2. Adonijah got the start in respect of possession, exalting himself, saying, I will be king. Yet the kingdom was Solomon's from the Lord, 1 Kings 1. The house of Ahaziah had not power to keep still the kingdom, 2 Chronicles 22, verse 9. And Athaliah took the possession of it, yet the people set up Joash, 2 Chronicles 23, verse 3. Next, we have many examples of such who have invaded the possessor, witness Jehoram and Jehoshaphat's expedition against Mesa, king of Moab. Elisha being in the expedition, 2 Kings 3, verses 4 and 5. Hence, we see the first pretense removed. The second is no better, which Augustine calls Magnum Latrocinium, a great robbery, I mean conquest, or a power of the sword gotten by the sword, which, that it can give no right to be owned, I prove, firstly, that which can give no signification of God's approving will, cannot give a title to be owned. But mere conquest can give no signification of God's approving will, as is just now proven about pos possession. For then the Lord should have approved all the unjust conquests that have been in the world. Secondly, Either conquest as conquest must be owned, as a just title to the crown, and so the Ammonites, Moabites, Philistines, etc., prevailing over God's people for a time, must have reigned by right, or as a just conquest. In this case, conquest is only a mean to the conqueror seizing and holding that power, which the state of the war entitled him unto, and this ingress unto authority over the conquered is not ground on conquest, but on justice, uh, excuse me, is not grounded on conquest, but on justice, and not all privative, but inclusive of the con but inclusive of the consent of the people. Excuse me, and then it may be owned, but without a compact upon conditions of securing religion and liberty and posterity, cannot be subjected without their consent. For whatever just quarrel the conqueror had with the present generation, he could have none with the posterity. The father can have no power to reign uh, to resign. Excuse me, the liberty of the children. Thirdly, a king as king and by virtue of his royal office, must be owned as a father, tutor, protector, shepherd, and patron of the people. But a mere conqueror, without consent, cannot be owned as such. Can he be a father and patron to us against our will, by the sole power of the sword? 
A father to these that are unwilling to be sons, and head over such as will not be members, and a defender through violence? Fourthly, a king as such is a special gift of God and blessing, not a judgment. But a conqueror as such is not a blessing, but a judgment, his native end being not peace, but fire and sword. Fifthly, that which hath nothing of a king in it cannot be owned to make a king, but conquest hath nothing of a king in it, for it hath nothing but violence and force, nothing but what the bloodiest villain that was never a king may have, nothing of God's approving and regulating will, nothing of institution or constitution, and a plain repugnancy to the ordination of God. For God hath said, Thou shalt not kill. Conquest says, I will kill and prosper and reign. Sixthly, a lawful call to a lawful office may not be resisted. But a call to conquest, which is nothing but ambition or revenge, ought to be resisted, because not of God's perceptive will. Otherwise, he should be the author of sin. Seventhly, that power which we must own to be the ordinance of God must not be resisted. Romans 13, verse 2. But conquest may be resisted in defense of our king and country. Therefore, it must not be owned to be the ordinance of God. Eighthly, that which God condemns in this word, excuse me, in his word, cannot be owned. But dominion by the sword, God condemns in his word. Ezekiel 32, verse 26, quote, Ye stand upon the sword, and shall possess the land, unquote. Amos 6, verse 13, quote, Ye rejoice in a thing of naught, which say, Have we not taken to us horns by our own strength? Unquote. Habakkuk 2, verses 5 and 6, quote, Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his, how long? Unquote. Etc. Ninthly, we have many examples of invading conquerors, as Abraham for the rescue of Lot pursued, and the, pursued the conquering kings unto Dan. Genesis 4, verse 4, quote, Jonathan smote a garrison of the conquering Philistines, unquote, in 1 Samuel 13, verse 3. The Lord owning and authorizing them so to do. The people did often shake off the yoke of their conquerors in the history of the judges, but this they might not do to their lawful rulers. What is objected from the Lord's people conquering Canaan, etc., is no argument for conquest. For he to whom belongs the earth and its fullness, disponed to Israel the land of Canaan for their inheritance, and ordained that they should get the possession thereof by conquest. It followeth not therefore that kings now, wanting any word of promise or divine grant to any lands, may ascend to the thrones of other kingdoms than their own, by no better title than the bloody sword. See Lex Rex, question 12. The third pretense of hereditary succession remains to be removed, which may be thus disproven. Firstly, this classes with the former, though commonly asserted by royalists, for either conquest gives a right or it does not. If it does, then it looses all allegiance to the heirs of the crown dispossessed thereby. If it does not give a right, then no hereditary succession founded upon conquest can have any right, being founded upon that which hath no right. And this will shake the most part of hereditary successions that are now in the world. Secondly, if hereditary succession have no right but the people's consent, then of itself it can give none to a man that hath not that consent, but the former is true. For it is demanded, how doth the son or brother succeed? By what right? It must either be by divine promise or by the father's will, or it must come by propagation from the first ruler, by a right of the primogeniture. But none of these can be. For the first, we have no immediate divine constitution, tying the crown to such a race as in David's covenant. It will easily be granted. They fetch not their character from heaven immediately, as David had it, a man of many peculiar prerogatives, to whose line the promise was restricted of the coming of the Messiah, and Jacob's prophecy that the scepter should not depart from Judah until his coming, Genesis 49, verse 10, was restricted to his family afterwards. Wherefore he could say, The Lord God of Israel chose me before all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. For he hath chosen Judah to be the ruler, and of the house of Judah, the house of my father. And among the sons of my father he liked me to make me king over Israel, and to all my sons... He hath chosen Solomon, verse Chronicles third, uh, 28, excuse me, verses 4 and 5. All kings cannot say this, neither could Saul say it, though immediately called of God as well as David. Yet this same promise to David was conditional, if his children should keep the Lord's ways, Second Chronicles 6, verse 16. Next, it cannot be said this comes from the will of the Father, for according to the scripture, no king can make a king, though a king may appoint and design his son for his successor, as David did Solomon. But the people make him.